in our series so far, we have talked about uh, lengths and pitches when it comes to the four elements. Um, uh, the remaining ones here would be dynamics and expression. And dynamics, of course, are uh, pianissimo, uh, forte, uh, mezzo forte, etc. And expression is everything else that you can do with the note to play it differently. Articulations would be uh, one subset of that. So here we can see we have some um, notation set to a variable. And we can see that, again, we start with the length, the pitch. Then we have the dynamic symbol, and then we have the expression. And in our case here, we have uh, legato and we have uh, martellato expressions. If I evaluate this or show it in, as a score, and we can see a martellato right there, which means playing it with sort of a hammered technique. Um, and you can also see the, the um, dynamic markers there. And you can hear that the note suddenly becomes very quiet when we get to the pianissimo, which is for B4 and C5 in the first bar. And uh, another thing to note here is that the legato is added after every note until it stops. And that will create the marker for the whole first bar there. Now there is actually a little trick you can use, which is um, a little bit advanced, but uh, I might show it anyway, which is to start with a double list and then you enter your, um, your expression. And then you can say uh, C4, D4, E flat four, four, G4, A flat four. And then you close the double list again. And now, rather than having to uh, enter it after every note, it will make your whole section uh, staccato in this case. I'll just leave it there. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. I hope it, don't let it confuse you, is <laughs> all I'm wanting to say. So for this first section, if we want to have a smoother um, uh, changes between velocities, we can use the velocity to dynamic function, which changes velocity symbols into um, into dynamics, meaning crescendo, decrescendo, etc. So here we can actually pass in the whole sequence and then play that. And now you can see that the velocities rise up and down. We can also see this in the um, MIDI uh, MIDI viewer. You can see the velocities there at the bottom. Um, and then if we evaluate this just using command E, we can see in the listener here that we get our decrescendo and crescendo um, uh, signs there, um, which are notated with the left and right uh, the triangle thingy. I forgot the exact name for that on the keyboard. Um, but that's how, how dynamics looks in ohm and notation. Um, this function can also take a, a list of um, dynamic symbols rather than a full sequence. So we can do pianissimo. Um, we have multiple of these. We can go, I think, up to five. Yeah. Um, to be quite precise. Now, I made a, spell a spelling error here because it's not blue, there. Right, so this is how we can evaluate just those dynamics. If we want those hairpins to look a little bit more pretty, we can say extend true. And we should probably take away some of these more ridiculous ones. So that's for velocity to dynamic. And then uh, another interesting one is, is velocity invert. And with all of these velocities, um, I should note that we can use this more traditional pianissimo symbol. What I personally prefer is to use with a, a floating point value um, between zero and one, basically, uh, to, would be between the, the quietest and the loudest um, velocity. So um, with this, let's say, let's create a, a little bit of a list here. Um, let's do four different velocities. And we can evaluate this. Now, if I evaluate that within velocity invert, what it will do, and you can see this better if we evaluate this with command E, so you can see that it inverts the velocity to the remainder. So if we have 0.25 for the first one, it will invert to 0.75. And um, 0 0.5 will, of course, in invert to also 0 0.5 and 0 0.9 to 0 0.1, etc. So this will make your loud sections quiet and your quiet sections loud. Um, which can be very nice to, uh, interesting to experiment with as well. Um, as well, it can be useful in some situations.
So another useful one is the velocity variant. And I think we've had some variant functions before now. Um, so this should be fairly straightforward. So let's do a forte. And right now we don't specify any variant, but if we open the documentation here, velocity variant, we can see that we have um, retrograde, invert, retrograde, invert, ascending, descending. So these are some of the uh, more common options that we used before. So let's go with the um, retrograde, for example. Uh, so we say variant is R. Um, this, all of this will be a little bit easier if we have a smaller list or a, a larger list rather. Right, so velocity variant, just a very useful, simple utility function. Then we can also create our own uh, crescendos and decrescendos, which again, I cannot say very well this word, um, by using this function. And then um, we specify how many values we want, let's say 16. And then we can say, okay, I want to go from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. And we get a rise in velocity there. Um, we have also gen dim. Um, we can go the other way around. I should give that a smaller value. And we have a function that can do both. So we have gen, uh, oh, let's add this here. Gen cross dim. Um, let's give this 16. See that this one will rise up and it will rise down. Um, another way to do this or to achieve this is again using our vectors. So um, one vector that we one vector conversion that we have available is a vector to velocity. And we can give that, let's say we start very soft and we go very high, and now we can add our f f um, vector here. So one that we have used a lot already is gen noise, so we could simply do that to get some random velocities there. Um, but one that we haven't used yet is gen ramp. And let's take a look at the documentation. This is a relatively new function, and it allows to create very beautiful ramps with different curves and different stages as such. And we can use that and map this to our velocity. So you could, could get velocity curves uh, like this, for example. So let's say gen ramp, um, we have to see what the first argument is. I believe it is the starting point. Uh, yes, so in our case, I guess we want to start at zero, and then we have a, uh, a list of the, of the stages. So this will have uh, the beginning, and then uh, the number of steps, and then the ending point. So let's say we start there, we have 32 steps, and uh, we end there. Now let's see if we can, let's first see if we can visualize this. Okay, so we can see that it comes up as a linear line. Now with the last value here, we can um, change the slope of this a little bit. So we can say, for example, 0 0.2. So let's say we end up with something like this. And now we pass that into our uh, velocities. So we get this line. And of course, we could extend on this idea as well and start to add multiple vectors. One technique that we haven't seen yet is to use a list for our vector. Um, so we can say vector to velocity, we can start with the, sa the same way. Um, but then we can open a list here and we can add different types of, um, of vectors. So we can use our gen noise, for example. Uh, we can add a uh, gen time, time series. I haven't showed this one yet. It's a more advanced function. Um, it takes a variety of arguments here. Uh, we can have a seat as well, but I won't set that. Uh, we have uh, Gaussian noise, which we can use here, which I have to type correctly. Let's also do 16, etc. So now we can add all of these vectors to, um, to a list and then uh, convert that. Let's see if we can visualize this. 
So these are all the different different um, dynamics that we're using right now, and then we're combining them together uh, to create this. So with a combination of these, of course, you can get very natural sounding dynamic curves. Now, uh, the, uh, some very advanced func functions are available here as well. One of them would be the Gen Rubin velocity. Um, I will not explain that, but I'll just show it to you um, so that you know that it's there. Uh, we can uh, really go to town with this uh, velocity mark. And these are, these are different techniques um, to think about dynamics as well. So, and this is one of the nice things about the Opus Modus is that it allows us to learn new things as well, things that we've never heard about. In my case, this was definitely an example of that. Let's just finish the function here. All right, so I'll add here for further studying. Now let's again uh, work with a section of music. I'll just paste it in here. Let's start working with this melody. And see if we can uh, change the dynamics of that a little bit. So I'll create a new keyword. I will call it dynamics. I will use my vector to velocity function. Velocity. Um, let's say we start at a low value and we go up to a rather high value. And then let's create, maybe let's start with three noise values for this so that um, we get three different accents. So it's going to choose a point in between these values um, and we get a three different ones. So if I evaluate gen noise by itself, you can see that it creates three floating point values. And if I um, evaluate the vector to velocity with the gen noise, we see that we get three different velocities there. So let's apply that um, to our section. So to do that, we can use a function called OMN replace. And this can replace a certain, um, a certain uh, element with, with another one. So in our case, this would the element would be velocity. So we can say set f, um, let's just call it seek repetition or replace, I mean, and when we use the omn replace function, and then we need to say what we want to replace. So we um, say that's the velocity, and then we give it the um, new list that we want, which in our case is dynamics, uh, dynamics, and then we give it the original sequence. So let's make sure I evaluate this and then this, and then let's listen to it. Right, compare that with. Now, of course, this gen noise, it doesn't have a seed. So every time you evaluate it, it will be different. This one I really like. So of course, if we want to fix something, we can give it a, a fixed seed as such. So this ohm and uh, replace is a, is a very useful one. You can find it right here. And of course, we can replace length, duration, pitch, velocity, and articulation. Um, can be very handy to, to post-process some section or to play around with some stuff. Now, this omn replace function, we can actually wrap that in another function. Uh, and a very interesting one we haven't talked about yet is called the do section. Let's first take a look at the, um, at the documentation for that. So it says that do section uh, distribute an operation over a range of lists. Uh, binary list selection returns a process list if one, if, the, if zero, the list is unchanged. What this means is that do section, it takes another function, as you can see here, and we can say when this function will be applied or when it won't be applied. So we can give it a list of either um, zeros or ones, and a one will mean that the function is applied, and a zero will mean that it's not applied. So if we do this, um, let's actually set this to a variable as well. Let's call it articulations. Um, we can now pass in that other function, which will be preceded by a, a comma. Um, and that is to make something data in, in a Lisp. It will mean that it will be evaluated differently. Um, so we, we pass in our OM and replace there, um, which again took something that we want to replace. So let's say we want to replace the 
articulation. And then I need to provide the new value. And for the new value, I'm going to choose a random pick function, which is a function that uh, randomly picks something from a list. So we can create a list of different um, expressions, marcato, staccato, maybe a pedal or something like this. Now you can see that every time I evaluate that function, it will choose one of them, staccato, uh, a pedal, marcato. Um, we can also quickly take a look at the documentation here. Um, it says random pick will pick either a single item from a list or a sublist from a list of lists. So here you can see random pick on this list returns six in this case. Um, it also takes a probability uh, probability keyword, which allows us to skew a value more to a certain side. So for example, if I say 0 0.8, it should more often uh, go with the pedal because it's like higher in the list. Uh, so that's for a random pick. And then lastly, and this might look a little bit strange, we pass in the variable x um, because do section will use this um, internally as a variable. Um, and then we need to give it our uh, actual sequence. So now let's listen to this. So you can see that we get a pedal marking in there. Here we get some staccatos. And every time we evaluate, this should be different. Let's make the outlining here a little bit more readable something like this perhaps we put the x there to show that it closes the om and replace function and now we can change our probability here to go more towards the staccato And right now, so this is being applied only to the, the first and the last bar. Um, you can say use only the, well, use the last three bars, for example. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a lot of ideas to work with uh, dynamics and expression. Um, of course, we're going to uh, take a look at this uh, in detail as well when we uh, start working on our score, which accidentally will be in the very next video.